Hello. Uh, today I'd like to talk about false color and my issues with false color. So let me quickly go over what false color is. I'm going to turn it on. As you can see right here, our image is a bunch of different colors. And if you look at the scale right here, it shows us what these colors mean. The IRE scale, which is how false color sees the image, false color goes from zero IRE to 100 IRE, where the higher you go up in IRE, the brighter the image is, or the brighter the pixels are. And then the lower you go in the IRE scale, the darker the image is, the darker the pixels are. So if we look at this right here, we can see that all this purple right here means that we're clipping into the blacks, right? And the red right here, this light over here, we're clipping into the whites. Now, if you see this yellow right here, it shows us that we're just below clipping into the whites. Problem is there are no yellows in this image or there's very little. And then right here, blue is supposed to represent us just above clipping into the blacks. Now, right here, this shows us middle gray, which is represented by the green color, and then one stop above middle gray. This is where you usually set your skin tone. So we have our mannequin head right here, and it's sitting at a pretty good exposure for our skin tones. Problem is the mannequin head is a little bit brighter. My skin's darker than the mannequin. The mannequin's just white, so it bounces light off. Uh, but when I was sitting right there, the exposure was actually pretty good. The first problem with false color is that there's no industry standard. Different cameras are gonna have different false colors and also different monitors have different false colors. Now, the different monitors using different colors to represent false color isn't really an issue. The problem is that some of them are gonna show you that your blacks are clipping sooner than when they would on a different monitor. I remember this certain case in college where I had a black magic camera and then it came with its own extra monitor and the two false colors on the camera versus the monitor were different. Uh, the external monitor was telling me that I was clipping much more in my blacks, while the camera was telling me I was good on exposure. Now, in most cases, the false color on your camera is designed for that camera and for the exposure latitude on that camera. The problem is that with external monitors, you have to calibrate the monitor to the sensor, but not all monitors are gonna be able to do that. The more expensive high-end monitors, you're gonna be able to calibrate your monitor to the camera sensor. Another problem with false color on external monitors is that you can have a false color reading on one camera and then transfer it to a different camera and then it'll show you a different false color reading, even if both cameras have exactly the same settings. Why is this the case? Do you remember when I was talking about IRE and how it goes from zero to 100? Well, you might be wondering what IRE even stands for. IRE stands for the Institute of Radio Engineers. The IRE scale was developed in the 1950s. Now you're probably wondering why engineers who work in audio would make a scale for those who work in video. Well, they didn't. IRE doesn't really scan exposure. IRE measures voltage. Now for a lot of you, you might be thinking, well, yeah, that makes sense. Lower voltage equals darker pixel, whereas higher voltage equals a lighter pixel. The problem with this thinking is that different sensors are tuned a bit differently. What if I told you that different camera manufacturers and different sensors use different IRE values to represent different parts of the image? So, middle gray on your black magic will have a different IRE value, a different voltage, compared to an Ari Alexa. The Ari Alexa uses 28 IRE, I believe, to represent middle gray. Most external monitors are just gonna put middle gray at 45 to 52 IRE, which means that if you take an external monitor and put it on your RE camera, it's not gonna show you the correct exposure. Now, if your external monitor can calibrate to that sensor, it's gonna show you a more accurate false color reading. Another problem I have with false color is that it's not even standardized around the same manufacturer. Okay, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve and we have that mannequin shot that we got earlier. And now let's see what happens when we drag a false color from DaVinci Resolve onto the clip. Do you see a problem? All this information over here that was clipping into the blacks is no longer clipping. And also the light over here isn't clipping as well. So what's going on? I thought it had something to do with the setting. So right now it's on the 4.6K and we want to change this to the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 4K. But as you can see, the information still doesn't line up. And then I thought, okay, what if we switch it to video? Still doesn't line up. Extended video, that doesn't match either. And another problem I have with the false color on DaVinci Resolve is that I can't even go 
down to the ISO that I shot with. So if we go to the settings down here and we click on camera raw, you'll see that my ISO is at 1250. Well, I can't even select 1250 from the dropdown. So what's going on? I think it might have something to do with how IRE is portrayed on the camera versus the software. Um, I don't even know if the false color on DaVinci Resolve uh, scans IRE because it's not, it's not looking at voltage. I then thought, oh, maybe you have to put a LUT on it. Maybe the false color is based off the LUT, which um, I drag on the LUT right here. And as you can see, we have Gen 5 film to video. Actually, it's probably Gen 5 film to extended video. I think that's probably it. So can I drag that on? Now it looks a little closer, but it's not quite right because as you can see, the light still isn't exposed correctly. Now I decided to test this out further by getting some underexposed shots and some overexposed shots. And as you can see, my false colors still don't match. My underexposed shots are showing a lot of purple, but they aren't showing as much blue that was on the camera. And my overexposed shots are telling me that I'm not clipping, even though on the camera I was completely clipping in the sky. So yeah, the false color on Black Magic is different from the false color on DaVinci Resolve. It could be that DaVinci Resolve has not updated their color science for Gen 5. So it's currently looking at the previous version of Blackmagic cameras. So it's not gonna show you an accurate reading, which if that's the case, they should definitely fix it. Now, if I'm missing something and you understand what this is, then you can let me know because it's confused me and it's caused me to make this video. It could be that the IRE scales don't actually match up and that they're showing different information. But if this is the case, then why? Why are they changing it? How do I fix all this? Well, well, you could learn your camera's sensor and learn it very meticulously. And then you could learn how your external monitor interprets the image through that sensor. And then you could go to DaVinci Resolve and create a false color LUT. So that way you can be the one to determine where you're clipping or where middle gray is. But that takes a lot of time and energy. Or you could get a camera monitor that actually calibrates to your camera sensor and shows you a more accurate false color. Now, that would be a much easier option. But I think the best option you have is to go with a monitor that uses EL zones. EL zones is trying to be the industry standard for exposure monitoring on your monitor. The power of EL zones comes from 18% gray. So if EL zones was the standard amongst all cameras, you would be able to turn it on and then figure out exactly where middle gray is. And middle gray will be universal amongst the different camera brands. EL zones also splits your exposure into stops so you can get way more specific with how you light things. It also means it's a lot easier for you to communicate with your camera team on set. A lot of people on set communicate in stops anyways. So you can easily look at something that's designed to look at the stops of your image. And then you can more easily communicate with the people who are setting up lights. Hey, I need this two stops darker or one stop brighter. With normal false colors, you can only really look at where you place the face and where you place the background. With false color, you're losing a lot of information. So dialing in exactly how you had the lights just isn't possible. It also means that you can retrace your steps and then figure out how you lit a scene like six months ago. Everything is much more specific and it shows you 13 steps stops of dynamic range. Another thing that false color has an issue with is that false color is a linear. So the IRE scale goes from zero to 100, whereas EL zones are logarithmic. Now, if you know anything about lighting, you'll understand why that's so beneficial because lights are based on stops. Every time you go up to stop, you double the amount of light. So a logarithmic scale makes way more sense when you're looking at exposure. Now, just to recap, EL zones is easier to use. It implements better with onset terminology. It's logarithmic, it's more specific, and finally, it fixes the more fundamental problem with false color, and that's control over the image. EL Zones gives more control to the filmmakers to set exposure where they want it. Now, EL Zones would have to be calibrated to each camera sensor. Once that happens, middle gray is gonna be middle gray universally. Ed Lockman, the cinematographer who helped design EL Zones, is currently in talks with all the big camera manufacturers to see if they will implement EL zones into their cameras. Now, they're gonna have to pay him, but if that happens, it'll make dialing in your exposure so much easier. It may seem like I 
don't like false color, but that, that isn't the case. I like using false color to quickly see where I'm clipping and where my skin tones sit. And for most people, that's good enough. But when I get to bigger shoots and I want to dial in my image and get very specific, false color is just not gonna cut it. And that's why I would recommend EL Zones. Right now, I don't have a monitor that has EL Zones, but next time I get the money, I might just pick one up. Now, if you want to pick up your own monitor, I'll have some links in the description. These will be affiliate links. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Tell me if you learned anything. Did you know that IRE values are based off voltage? And did you know about EL zones? Now, if you like this video and you think it's very important, then give it a like and subscribe. If you think this information is important, then consider sending it to a few of your filmmaking colleagues so that way they can better understand this. Now, if you want to learn how to take one of your cameras and then just attach it to anything and get really cool shots, then watch this video right here.